Hello everybody. Let us now study another uh, very good uh, process that is freeze drying. This topic also we will take up in two parts. In the part one, we will discuss basically the fundamental aspects of freeze drying, basic principles and the systems. And in the second part of this topic that is the in the next lecture, we will talk about uh, different equipments which are used for freeze drying of various foods and we will also take up a few case studies or a few product applications of food dry, freeze drying. In the earlier classes, we have discussed and you have seen that the removal of moisture from the food is an important operation for its preservation. It results in the microbial deterioration, reduced rates of enzyme and other causative chemical reactions for food spoilage, reduced product mass and volume. This results in efficient product transportation and storage and often is more convenient food for consumer use. In this although again in the water chapter when we were studying, we discussed the concept of uh, water activity versus food stability, but just to refresh your memories, I have uh, taken this uh, figure here and it shows that uh, in this Jarbson isotherm region that is the water how it is present in the food that is ionic form, covalent form and that is the water which is present in the solutions or it is present in the capillary or physically entrapped in the tissue matrix and these various reactions shows that how like for example, you can see here bacteria and yeast growth only the water which is present in solute and capillary is available whereas, other the in other process like browning reaction, moisture uh, enzyme activity, mold growth etcetera, even some of the bound water can also be utilized. In the lipid oxidation reaction, even the ionic water which is that is more formally bound in the food material that can also be uh, involved. So, this shows that uh, water how it is present and obviously, this forms a basic principle in any of the food dehydration process. Freeze drying is also termed as lyophilization. It is a drying process where the wet product is first frozen to a solid phase and this frozen mass is subsequently dried by the process normally called sublimation that is sublimation of the ice under reduced pressure and typically the freeze dried food foods might contain moisture content even the as low as 1 to 3 percent. So, there are two basic aspects of the freeze drying process number one freezing of the product and number two then drying of the frozen mass by sublimation process. And in this uh, picture, this representation that is the process is represented picture really that is like that is the product in the ice form, the dry layer and how the moisture is getting removed by sublimation process under different. So, basic freeze drying system is schematic representation you can see in this figure. A brief comparison between the freeze drying process and conventional drying processes. This uh, freeze drying is much better in many respects than that of the conventional drying. In the conventional drying, solid to be dried is exposed to a 
continuous flow of a hot stream of air where the moisture evaporates. So, lot of the transfer processes and other factors are responsible here. Whereas, in the freeze drying, it is the removal of ice or other frozen solvents from a material through sublimation. The temperature ranges normally in the conventional drying higher temperature ranges may be that 37, 40 to 90 and above are used. Whereas, in the freeze drying that is the temperature normally is the below freezing point. The conventional drying conducts as a atmospheric pressure whereas, in the case of freeze drying reduced pressure is needed. In the conventional drying evaporation of water is from the surface of the food whereas, in the freeze drying it is the sublimation of water from ice plant. In the conventional drying there is movement of solutes and sometimes this movement of solutes may result into the case hardening whereas, in the freeze drying there is minimum solute movement or nil solute movement. In the conventional drying stresses in solid foods cause structural damage and shrinkage whereas, in the freeze drying there is no structural damage or minimum structural damage in the material or there is minimum shrinkage or no shrinkage in the material. That is a conventional drying is normally a slow process there might be incomplete rehydration whereas, the freeze drying is a rapid and there is a complete rehydration we can get comparatively lower moisture content in the freeze dried foods. In the conventional drying solid or porous dried particles often have a higher density than the original food whereas, in the freeze drying food the porous dried particles have a lower density than that of the original food. Normally there are depending upon the temperature and other factors of the conventional drying processes order and flavor of the dried foods are frequently not good or they are disturbed whereas, in the case of freeze dried product order and flavor are normally normal or they are good. Similarly, color also in the conventional dried food color may become darker in the frozen foods or freeze dried foods color usually is normal. The conventional drying process may result into the nutrient destruction whereas, in the freeze drying process nutrients are largely retained and of course, the other that is if you look at the or compare the economics of the both the processes conventional drying process are generally low costly, but the freeze drying process is a costly process. So, let us now understand the fundamental of the freeze dehydration process. You can see here in the this uh, or uh, phase diagram of water right that is the pressure is on y axis and temperature is on x axis. Okay. So, means there is a when you increase the pressure or temperature that is the system comes there is a that is the with the changes in the pressure and temperature that matter it may change from the solid to liquid to gas or solid to directly gas depending upon the pressure and temperature of the system. And there is a point called triple point you can see here in this figure this is a triple point means that is which is generally for water it is 1 4.18 tor or that is a 0 degree Celsius temperature or in other words it is about 611.73 Pascal and 0 0.01 degree Celsius. So, if in the system that is the where the system contains solid means that is frozen mass ice mass is there if in the system the pressure and temperature is maintained below that this uh, tem triple point temperature and pressure then there is a directly conversion of solid into gas means that is ice will be directly sublimed into water vapors that is pro process is sublimation process or in the freezing when the similar conditions is there then 
gas also can be directly converted into that uh, solid phase and uh, that is called uh, your deposition. On the other hand, if the system pressure and temperature is above the triple point temperature and pressure, then solid will change to liquid that is called melting and the liquid will change to solid which is called freezing process and the liquid will cause to change to gas which is vaporization and gas to liquid is called condensation. So, these are the how the changes in the temperature and pressure influence the various processes that is the conversion of the solid into liquid into gas or gas into liquid liquid into solid or directly uh, solid into gas. So, it, this explains that is the process of freeze drying that is the sublimation direct transition from solid to gaseous state without going through a liquid. Okay. And as I told you it can work, occur only if vapor pressure and the temperature are below the triple point of water. General considerations of uh, freeze drying process you see in the ideal case in the ideal distribution of moisture during sublimation you can see here in the picture figure A that there is an interface you can say this is the frozen layer and this is a dry layer. So, means there is an interface where the moisture of the product drops from initial M 0 instantaneously to the that is the initial M 0 temperature uh, moisture content of in the frozen layer it drops to a final moisture content to M f that is the at the final moisture content of the dry layer. So, M f is the final moisture content of the dry layer M 0 is the initial and this up to what level what will be the value of M is determined by equilibrium with partial pressure of water that is P i in the space surrounding the dry matter. So, this is the ideal case, but in actual practice this ideal representation does not hold good it does not occur all right and the process is actually represented in actual sense in the figure B which shows that there is some transition layer there is the some gradient in the dry layer ok which is called that is the transition layer which you can see here this transition layer in this that is the moisture content of the food is much higher than that of the dry layer you can see here and the is a there is no longer any ice. So, it is a concentrated phase you can say that is concentrated phase the solute where most of the solutes are concentrated in the unfrozen mass. So, this transition layer there and the final moisture content. So, but engineering calculations etcetera of the freeze drying processes have shown that is this transition layer that is very thin. So, in general calculations and engineering calculation modeling of the freeze drying process normally this is ignored and this does not affect much on the calculate the value or the process operations etcetera. Then the freezing step there are two things as I told you two important operations freezing step and drying step. So, the freezing in this step there is the freezing temperature and time both is a function of the solute in the solution and the eutectic state is required to ensure the removal of water by sublimation only that is important that is during all the process eutectic state as I told you the triple point maintenance is a must. Melting and inadequate freezing may form frothy and gummy substances in the final product. 
if the proper eutectic is not maintained there it may result into the melting and there may be inadequate if it inadequate freezing was not there that is the water and solid there all this water is most of the water is not converted then it result into the these problems the permeability of the frozen layer can also affect the migration of solute components from the unfrozen mass so these are some of the important consideration which should be seen similarly the drying step drying step may take two play types that is the two components need to be considered that is in two parts one is the primary drying and other is the secondary drying as you could can see in these figures that is the primary drying step it involves the sublimation of ice under vacuum whereas the secondary step begins when all ice has been sublimed that is there is no unbound water you can say another because it is ice it was only the unbound water has frozen into the ice so when all ice has been sublimed then secondary steps starts and in this the moisture contents for the removal comes partially from partially bound water in the drying material so these are the primary drying step and secondary drying steps are important for process analysis so let us see heat and mass transfer in freeze drying the general considerations okay in this figure you uh, have just try to show uh, that schematic representation of the process of the heat and mass transfer occurring during freeze drying and actually this is a food you can say where this is the frozen layer that is the ice phase and this is your dry layer right then in the freeze drying process there is there is a some heat source we will see the towards the latter part of this lecture where we study freeze drying system then there is some heat source and from this heat source is heat is applied or heat is supplied to the food material all right and the proper conditions are maintained like temperature pressure etc so this heat causes the sublimation of the ice and so the ice removes there is a so there is a heat transfer as well as mass transfer and through condenser it is it goes to the condenser and finally it is removed so these are the, the so heat transfer as well as mass transfer so the process efficiency in fact there are two factors here number one is the rd that is the resistance of dry layer in the food is important as per as the heat transfer is concerned whereas rs is resistance of the space between the food and the condenser and that is so these two resistances resistance of the dry layer in the food and resistance of the space between the food and the condenser are the important consideration in the engineering analysis and accordingly the drying rate or heat transfer and mass transfer the rate of sublimation or in other words you can say the rate of mass transfer can be given by this uh, equation g is equal to a pi minus pc divided by rd plus rs plus k1 inverse where g is the rate of sublimation a is the sublimation area that is area of the solid mass to the total surface area from where this sublimation is occurring p1 is the vapor pressure of the ice pc is the condenser vapor pressure rd and rs i already explained to you and k1 is a constant depending upon the molecular weight of the sublime surface substances and in this case it is the ice at the same time there is the continuous that is the there must be a proper supply of heat of sublimation that is 
delta H s okay. and therefore, g will be is equal to we can calculate g is equal to q by delta H s where q is the heat flux. So, these two that is the rate of sublimation will be governed by these factor that is the heat flux as well as the heat uh, uh, of sublimation supply to the system. Okay. So, it shows that uh, freeze drying is a coupled heat and mass transfer and both of these should be there is both the heat transfer as well as mass transfer should be considered simultaneously in an analysis of this operation. So, let us see heat, heat transfer that is you have seen in the earlier uh, that is the interface between the frozen zone and dry zone is called sublimation front that is here in these pictures we have a frozen zone and we have a dry zone. So, that sub interface between the frozen zone and dry zone is called sublimation front because the, it is the sublimation front from which the water that is gas uh, solid is getting evaporated as well it is sublimed into vapor. So, there are heat transfer in sublimation front there are three ways in which this heat transfer might occur. Number one heat transfer through the frozen layer there may be heat transfer through the dry layer or there might be internal heating by microwaves etcetera right, through radiation. So, in this picture you can see that there are A, B and C three cases may be there in the freeze drying process. In the case A is heat transfer is there is the thick line are showing mass heat transfer and thin line in the figure the thin line is showing mass transfer thick line is showing heat transfer. So, in the condition A situation A heat transfer is through the frozen layer and mass transfer is through the dry layer and both of them are in the same direction. In condition 2 the heat transfer and mass transfer that is the both they are through the dry layer and they are from the opposite direction in the opposite direction both heat dry uh, transfer and the mass transfer both are from the hot surfaces through the dry layer and they are in the opposite direction. Whereas, in the case C third case that is heat is generated internally by microwave etcetera. So, heat transfer here is by radiation internal heat generation of the heat and in fact, in these th all the situations the fridge tank time and other things should be properly uh, considered and calculated and the process efficiency as far as the process efficiency is concerned the third scenario appears to be you can get that is the very in very comparatively less drying time we can get the required. Whereas, in the case 2 the drying time may be little more than the that obtained in the case C and in the case A the drying time is comparatively higher because accordingly the resistances etcetera which are uh, in the case C almost there is no resistance R D R S etcetera because it is internal generation of the heat. Whereas, in the case A and case B R D and R S both are on of this may be applied. So, so, as far as the rate of heat transfer is concerned as I told you that in the case of first case A case heat transfer through the frozen layer the rate will depend upon the thickness and the thermal conductivity of the ice layer accordingly it is a that is a resistance etcetera. In the second case A B there is heat transfer through the dry layer the rate of heat transfer to the sublimation front depends upon the thickness and area of the food as well as thermal conductivity of the dry layer and temperature difference between the surface of the food and ice front. In third case heating by microwaves heat is generated at the ice front 
and the rate of heat transfer is not influenced by the thermal conductivity of the ice or dry food or the thickness of the dry layer. This is the figure shows the rate of the mass transfer, how the changes in temperature in the process that is thick line is shown here the moisture change whereas, the dotted line is shows that the temperature change and how changing the temperature in the drying freeze drying system how it results into the removal of moisture from the food. In fact, the factors controlling the water vapor pressure gradient because the water vapor pressure gradient also will result into the mass transfer better mass transfer or higher the gradient higher will be the mass transfer okay. and it depends that is the pressure in the drying chamber temperature of the vapor condenser and temperature of the ice at sublimation front these are the major factors which contribute to the which control the water vapor pressure gradient. Drying time in the freeze drying process there is drying time T d it can be calculated using this formula that is where T d is equal to L square rho m 0 minus m f delta H s divided by 8 k T s minus T i. Where T s is the maximum permissible surface temperature, T i is the temperature at the sublimation front, m 0 and m f are the initial and final moisture contents, rho is the bulk density of the solid, L is the thickness of the slab, delta H s is the latent heat of sublimation and k is the thermal conductivity of the dry layer and as you can see here in this figure that is the drying time is proportional to the square of the food thickness. So, let us see components of a freeze dryer that is a freeze drying system, freeze drying equipment. It has that is a vacuum chamber which contains the tray to hold the food during the drying that is a space in which the vacuum is there and also the appropriate device to keep the food during freeze drying process. Then it has heaters to supply the heat uh, latent heat of sublimation, refrigeration coils to condense the vapor directly to ice. It has some condenser which where the vapor contact the condensing surface and as they come the, the, to the condensing surface they give up their energy and turn into the ice. So, this ice gets collected into the uh, condensers and then there is a vacuum pump to remove the non condensable vapor and of course, there should be control and measuring instruments like pressure, temperature, possibly weight etcetera. That is the, so, this is the freeze drying system. Accordingly, there are different uh, freeze drying methods ok. There is the one you can see here it is the contact or conduction freeze drying where the food is placed onto the ribbed you can see here ribbed trays which rest on heater plates with uneven contact and the dry is here uh, that is the drying is very slow comparatively that is slow heat is transferred by conduction to the only one side of the food and of course, but it has a higher capacity that is the, the equipment size etcetera may be higher here in this case. The another it may be accelerated freeze drying in this system in the accelerated freeze drying the food material is held between two layers of expanded metal mesh and these are exposed to a slight pressure on from both the sides. So, accordingly the heat transfer here in this case is higher and so since heat transfer is more it results into the less drying time. There is third type is the radiation freeze drying where there is the 
infrared radiation from the radiant heaters is used to heat cellular layers of the food which are kept on the flat trays. And here in this case the heating is more uniform than the conduction type and the constant drying conditions are obtained here. Okay. Vapor movement is approximately 1 meter per second. So, it result in a fast drying as I told you earlier and also here there is little risk of product carry over in this process. And the basis of that there are microwave heating in the freeze drying like radiation. Similarly, the microwaves can be used to uh, heat the foods in the during the freeze drying process. You can see here in this case actually there is this equipment setup is same, but there is just some system that is particularly the magnetron are there to generate microwaves and these microwaves with the help of waveguides they are supplied to the vacuum chamber all right and which provide the heat energy or latent heat of sublimation and which results causes the and inside the vacuum chamber the product are kept between them. So, there is a interaction of electric and magnetic field and this interaction of electric and magnetic field actually results in the development of a, a space charge and the sublimation occurs. The disadvantages of the this process are however, that is this process control is little tedious, it is little comparatively difficult process. The cost of the system that is even not very good costly equipments are available for this uh, process that is microwave assisted freeze drying and the ionization of gases due to this my, uh, microwave effects. These are the some of the drawbacks or disadvantages of the this system. However, if a suitable equipment economic equipment is made available, this may be a comparatively much better process. Now, I will just like to summarize the lecture by again giving you the advantages of the freeze drying process. It results into the rapid dehydration of the materials, retains taste, smell and texture of the food. There are very less or nil uh, loss of nutrients. It results into the reduced weight, expanded self life and even in some cases that is of course, if the all the conditions are properly maintained this it may result into the sterility of the product as well in some specific cases. So, of course, as in a, the, as like in any process there are some good points, there are some bad points. So, similarly in this case also there are certain drawbacks like it has a high capital investment that is for the freeze drying system the capital investment is very high operating and maintenance cost are also accordingly high. The process is very complex it should be properly and it becomes sometime difficult to control the all the operation etcetera to the meticulous level or to the desired level. The it is a complex engineering phenomena ok. The equipment requires a team of skilled and permanently trained collaborators accordingly and the volatile compounds sometimes if the process is not properly controlled might be removed particularly when the vacuum label used for the freeze drying is comparatively higher. So, with this I thank you for your patience here.